everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. We lost the last run, which is embarrassing in and of itself. We lost it as a character. We should not have lost that. Do I remember who that character was? No. That was that was multiple days ago at this point. <laughs> you expect me to remember 3ZWF X Kia? That's IKEA, but for the 21st century. I was thinking, you know, like, uh, if you're watching this, did you live through the dawn of the of the new millennium, which, as of right now, I believe we're still living in? Um, it was a different time. I really feel like, you know, okay, let, I, I'm bouncing, I'm ping ponging back and forth between a lot of different topics here, but so I grew up. Predominantly in the 1990s and the early 2000s, mid-2000s. It depends when, when you think you've grown up, you know what I mean? Good defense on that one. But I have, uh, I have memories uh, of, of the 1990s for sure. You know, from like 93 to, you know, December 31st, 99. Not a great bomb, but that's okay. And uh, obviously, you know, I, 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 considering I went to college in 2006, I might actually remember less of the 2000s than I do of the 1990s, but I should remember more of the 2000s, let's put it that way. And in the mid-2000s, I never thought for a second that the 1990s sort of style, particularly of fashion, but also just like a, a reverence for that decade, I never thought it would come back. Because at the time, mind you, I was like barely double digit ages for part of it but um you know i'm not gonna say everybody seemed miserable in the 90s but you know i think when you're living through a time period you kind of you take it for granted right nowadays we're in the almost the 2020s people look back on the 90s and they're like ah a, a bustling economy a sane housing market more time to prevent the catastrophic effects of climate change. Stuff like that, you know? And I think in a way we actually look back now, because we, we have the benefit of hindsight, on a, an era that was a little bit less uh, inundated by technology proliferating every aspect of our lives, and people look back on that and they're a little nostalgic. But at the time, I never thought we would see the 90s aesthetic return. And then... Imagine my surprise around like 2011, 2012, I start to see people walking around in, uh, you know, neon plastic rimmed sunglasses and, you know, like spandex uh, lycra and stuff like that. And the, the, I think, you know, in particular, whenever I see, sometimes Kate will show me like a new K pop song or something like that. And uh, when I look at the guys, Hairstyles. <laughs> I'm like, yo, that's that's 1990s like Nick Carter hairstyle. And then it, you know, it, it feels like it started in K-pop, and then as people here sort of caught on, they they brought it back over here as well. So what what the heck is my point? Well, my first point is I don't think I'm going to be able to go to the item room. But my uh, second point is I wonder. How long it'll take before we get that early 2000s aesthetic back? <laughs> Everything was called... Uh, if, if you had, like, a media property and you wanted to reboot it in the year 2000, you just put Neo on it somewhere. Oh, you, you liked M.A.S.H., the show about the Korean War? Well, this is Neo M.A.S.H. Alan Alda's character is a cyborg now. This never happened, by the way, but... There's still time. Smack him. Smack him. Split. Good split like M. Night Shyamalan wishes he did. And then, quick little touch and go here. Everything was like, everything was curved. Like, if you look at UI elements on websites from back, I mean, everything now is, is very unfortunate. We don't have any other gas here, but we'll just move on, I guess. This is a very bereft floor for us. Um... It, 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 like, all of the console interfaces were curved. No buttons had any sort of edges to them. We thought we were in a, living in a world without edges. I wonder when that'll come back. I'm gonna... I don't feel old yet. And I, I know that that sounds ridiculous given how many times I say, but I'm old. 
in in videos, but like I, I really do still feel young because this 90s culture is like I, I'm living through it as an adult for the first time ever. But I'm telling you, if uh, studded belts come back <laughs> and then like uh, that mop hairstyle that was really popular when like, you know, the used was the most popular band in your middle school, that's dude, I'm. I, I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to check out of modern society at that point. I am not ready for the world to be nostalgic for um, the world that I said no to when I turned 18, if that makes sense. You, by the way, if you disagree and you're like, I love that era, by all means. Don't let me be a curmudgeon. I, as always, I can only give you uh, my personal opinion and it's a folly, I think, of me to suggest, uh, you know, otherwise, that I could, that I could be everything to everybody. Hmm. I don't think we want to do this, unfortunately. We'll blow this guy up, hopefully get a key or something, though. Uh, okay. I'm still gonna use this. I don't, uh, the tower's a little spooky. And we'll leave like that. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, if, if we start to go, we, we, we see... You know, 40-year-old men trying to be cool wearing, like, spiked bracers and stuff like that, and... If if that lead singer's haircut from Simple Plan becomes, like, the, the predominant hairstyle again... I don't know, man. I think, uh... I think maybe that's when you get old on a cultural sense. Is when... They say your uh, coolness dies two deaths. The first one when you say no to a trend, and the second one when that trend comes back around 25 years later. And we are getting pretty close to the year 2000 being 25 years ago. Mind you, uh, pop punk emo isn't really from the year 2000. I, I would tend to think of that more as like a peak 2004 sort of era, but anyway. Just, just things to think about, you know? Everybody's excited about the, the dawn of a new decade. I did not mean to open that, but I forgot that I could open that by just hitting it like so. <clears throat> and it is, I mean, it's wild. 2020 still feels like a futuristic uh, number to me. But I guess, like, it, it always feels like a futuristic no. I, I wonder you just hit a point sometime where you're like, it doesn't feel futuristic. Because I remember, you know, being alive in the year 1999 and being like, yo, the year 2000? That's crazy, dude. It turns out it was not that crazy. Thinking back now, the year 2000 seems, like, absolutely antiquated. We were still using floppy disks in my computer class. And we were like, we knew that they were getting a little outdated, but we're like, what do you want them to do? Put a CD burner in every classroom? <laughs> Mayo, when you start paying taxes, you'll understand. We can't afford to put a, a stack of rewritable CD-ROMs in every classroom. What are we trying to do here? Charity work? Sorry, I apologize. My voice is a little hoarse. Um, we'll still peep it. Absolutely. I kind of, I mean... We only have, uh, five items, which is hilarious. <laughs> Considering we're on, uh, the catacombs, too. You would expect to be a little bit deeper in, but, uh, we, we've been bereft of keys, and all, and the item rooms we have gone to have largely contained, uh, spacebar items. So, you know, not a whole lot we can do here. Um, but yeah, last night I went to, uh, the Canucks game, and for the first time in a long time, uh, they actually won... So I was cheering a little bit. Usually at games, it's not like anxiety. Because if I had anxiety about this stuff in the first place, I just wouldn't go to the games. But, like, I don't cheer as much as the average person because I have a job where I have to use my voice. We're definitely going to take this. I think, work with me on this one, okay? We're going to grab this and then swap and then... The by getting more plays with Satanic Bible, which we could do with Temperance, but I don't want to lose our chance at a bone heart here. Um, we'll we'll get uh, the spirit back. But I have a, a a job where I use my voice, so you know, I, occasionally I'm like, "Hey, good job!" But you know, 
if you've never been to a professional sporting event, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> they they do like a lot of stuff that participation is optional. Like they always do a noise meter thing that is just like I I I can't because first off I don't believe the noise meter in the first place uh, I, I'm pretty sure that it's just a, a pre-rendered animation every single time um, that goes like first it goes into the, like the yellow part and then you're like oh we're getting pretty loud but then it goes down to green and you're like we gotta get louder and you just keep going but um, I, I my personal opinion on that stuff is that that's largely there um, just so you don't realize that uh, you have downtime, and like the people at home are watching Tim Hortons commercials at the present moment. You're in the audience, and you're like, "What the heck? We haven't been playing hockey for like four minutes here." And you're like, "Yeah, that's because Toyota had a big ad buy." Shut up and look at the noise meter, sheeple. Um, but last night, you know, it was an exciting game. I'm not gonna inundate you with hockey talk, but I I've been to a lot of stinkers. I, I think I'm probably batting pretty close to 500. You know, I've been going to Canucks games here since, like, 2014. And, um... It's not a long time, obviously. But the team's been pretty bad over that stretch. This is, like, by far the best year. Except for that one time they snuck into the playoffs and lost in the first round. Um, but... I've seen a lot of stinkers. Last night's game, not a stinker. Jacob Markstrom putting up 49 saves... The second most saves by a Canuck goaltender in uh, franchise history. It's an exciting game to be at. So I cheered a little bit. Most of the time, I'm very reserved. But let me tell you, I, I sat... I gotta... Next time I get tickets, I should buy them in this area. First off, because they weren't $500 a pop, which is... Uh, Nice. Now that, you know, when I was seeing games back in, uh, I remember I saw a game in like January of 2016 or 2017 when the team was just absolutely terrible. I bought four tickets. The tickets were literally like under $20 a pop I mean, on the secondary market because the team was so bad. Those were the days, dude. I'm like torn between, I want, when I'm watching on TV, I want my team to be good. That way, I, I know I'm getting entertainment. When I'm buying tickets to go to the games... Whoops, accidentally kicked my footrest there. I want the team to be garbage so tickets are cheap. And then when I get there, they just have the game of their lives. <laughs> Grass is always greener. Anyway. But most of the time, I'm, I'm reserved. And I was thankful because I sat next to reserved uh, people this time. It was a surprisingly well-behaved professional sports game audience. I was sitting next to an elderly gentleman, uh, and the only complaint I have about him is that he was encroaching on my seat a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that's because he was wearing, like, literally four coats, which, you know? What am I gonna say? You can't do that? That's not really fair of me, is it? And then, on the other side, I mean, Kate was sitting next to me, and then, uh, on the other side of Kate was just, a, an elderly lady who was also listening to, uh, the radio station during the game so she could hear the play-by-play. -play. It's a respectful audience. You can't really complain. And trust me, if I could, I would, because, you know, I'm always eager for more, for more banter. That was like, you know, I had a busy Saturday. Today's Sunday. I had a busy Saturday. We went to the Canucks game at night. I, I'm anecdote rich. When I woke up in the morning, you know, I got ready, you know, you, you don't need to know the nitty-gritty details. I jumped in the shower, used the charcoal face wash, etc, etc. But suffice to say that happened. Then I was like, you know what? I It's not a New Year's resolution thing, but uh, I, I have to switch gyms because we moved. And I've been dragging my heels on it. I've just been going to the old one despite it being inconvenient. Um, so I, I went to a better gym that's, uh, you know, closer. And I, I had, I, I was like, hey, can I sign up for a membership? And they're like, sure. What they didn't say is that signing up for a membership also is, uh, it, you can't just sign up for a membership. It's like actually going to a meeting at the bank. First off, you, I, I'm not much of a sales guy. In fact, 
to be honest, I kind of resent the field of sales in general. Um, and if you if you work in sales, I apologize because I think that my distaste and distrust for the industry of sales is based on nonsense like Glen Gary Glen Ross, right? Where people the the culture is like you got to constantly be closing these sales. You got coffees for closers. First place gets a new Toyota Tercel. Second place is you fired. You know? So every time I go to a, like a a place where there's commission-based sales, and they're like, hey, what's your name? And I'm like, it's Ryan. They're like, hey, Ryan, nice to meet you. And I'm like, listen, buddy, I'm just here to get a dishwasher. I don't know who you are. Stop calling me by my name just because you read how to win friends and influence people, okay? I get it. You, your, your psychology is working backwards right now, though. You're, you're going to lose the sale. But there is a... Uh, There is uh, the one sales technique that I am uh, a big fan of, and it's called don't overrun the sale. I don't know if that's what it's called, but something similar like that. Basically, if you've already got the sale, you don't need to keep selling. You know what I mean? You run the risk of talking yourself out of a sale. So you get a customer. The customer walks in and says, hey, I'd like a membership. Give them the membership. I go in, I say, I want a membership. Staff associate starts to tell me, hey, do you want a tour of the facilities? That's a polite ask, but because I am a millennial, I've already seen the tour on the internet. Um, I do not need to see it in person. I prefer the internet version because there's no smell-o-vision. Then she says, here's an overview of our facilities. Then she says... Here's an overview of the benefits of membership. Then she says if you sign up now, you even get two free personal training sessions. And we'll throw in a gym bag and a towel for free. And I, I said yes to everything. But I was also like, you got the sale. Stop drilling. You hit oil. If anything, you're going to get me to walk out of here. Because now I, you, you've included with my uh, membership... You've forced me to engage in some social interaction, not just with you, but then later they're going to be like, well, do you want to redeem that personal training session? And I'm going to be like, nah, I kind of like, I'm not saying you're not experts, but I kind of got my own thing going on. And I don't really want to work out and, and talk to somebody simultaneously. And it's a whole thing. Anyway, we got it done. But it took, you got to sign a hundred contracts. I'm like, I apologize if you work in law, but... You, we, as a society, we have a fetishization of, of contracts. That is, I, I get it. You know, because it's it represents the terms of a, a legally binding agreement between, you know, two entities. It's important that, you know, you, you have the ground rules of, uh, you know, the business relationship that you're going to have. And then if somebody violates it, you know, you can proceed from there. But at the same time, I'm like, brother, I'm just trying to come into this gym, pick up some iron cylinders, put them back down. feel like some things in my... I, I get why they exist, because we live in a litigious society. And you get what you freaking deserve, Murray. But uh, it's just like, some of these contracts, I feel like, when you say, I want a membership... Your signature should be implicit. Like, they made me sign a waiver that was like, hey, if you get hurt lifting weights, it's not our fault, right? And I was like, yeah, obviously. It's like, do you need another one? Like, if I'm driving to the gym and I get in a car accident, it's not your fault? Like, uh, if, I, if I think about going to the gym and it creates unpleasant thoughts for me, it's not your fault? Like, how, how deep does the rabbit hole go here? You don't understand that now. It's all about insurance. It's a blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but did you ever consider that is dumb and I hate it? <laughs> That's, you know, many entities in the country of Canada are under the false impression that I'm an important person. I, I sign contracts more than I would like to, to be honest. And uh, every time I sign it, I'm always just like, you could have just assumed this one and then come back afterwards. 
There's only one thing that I don't sign that I'm a, a big, like, I'm very anal about. And that's like, hey, can we have your contact information? Uh, I'm like, yeah. And they're like, do you consent to get offers from us in, in your email or over the telephone? And I'm like, oh my god, absolutely not. Are you insane? I'm already a customer. What could you possibly sell me on? This, that's just madness. I absolutely do not cons uh, consent to that. And you might laugh. Oh, Grandpa. So paranoid. Yeah, but, you know, in 2023, when every single retail entity has been... ...data breached, we'll see who's laughing. Probably nobody will be laughing, myself included, but, you know... It's not really that that funny, but anyway, moving on. Following that, um, you know, we, we got our tires changed, switched from all season tires to winter tires, so we can actually drive in the northern part of BC. Starting now, is you told you it's an exciting day. Played a few runs of Hades while I was waiting for the tires to get changed. Picked up the car. Came home, and then, so I, we got a waffle maker from our, our in-laws for Christmas. And the, I, I, who doesn't love a waffle, right? It's designed by evolution to be like the perfect food. It's like, oh, sweet fat. Plus, you put pure sugar syrup on top of it. Like, it's a dream come true in the flavor department. And I, you can make them a little healthier. Like, you don't have to have them with the maple syrups. You know, you could have... Uh, you could, you could have a savory waffle and maybe put, like, you know, some salmon on it or something like that. Um, but we got this waffle iron. And, you know, I'm starting this... Uh, yikes, those are all terrible. I'm starting to, you know, trim down a little bit weight-wise in the new year. So I thought, I know there's this thing out there called protein waffles, you know? Why don't I try to make that? Now, I know what you're going to say, NL. Why didn't you just buy Kodiak Cakes? First off, I no longer have a Costco membership. Secondly, that's the only place they're sold in Canada. Thirdly, I didn't know they existed until I tweeted about this disaster, okay? So I found a recipe online, and it lied to me. I do want to say... Uh, it had, like, a four-point-something stars, okay? So it wasn't a situation... Where I didn't pay attention to the reviews. The reviews were like, it's a 1 out of 10. The reviews were like, it's so good. And I, I should have known early that something was askew. Because it said the prep time for, the, for making a protein waffle was 5 minutes. And in the modern era, there is no food, I think, that has 5 minutes of prep time. You know, especially this one, you got to get out a mixing bowl. You got to get out all the ingredients. Even that by itself is is five minutes. So don't even start with me. Even like microwaving a, a hot pocket or something. You might be able to approach the five minute section there. But anyway, so it was like mixed protein powder, vanilla extract, baking powder, um, a mashed banana or pumpkin puree, and blah, 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 blah. So I mixed it, added some water, added some egg whites to make myself a waffle batter. Um, hold on, we just losing a few bone hearts here, okay? Maybe start playing it like this, even though our DPS is kind of bad. And I was so excited. I preheated the waffle iron. And I in my head, so on Wednesday, or on Thursday, Kate made me a waffle with the waffle maker. It was 10 out of 10 delicious. I knew going into this, because I'm using protein powder instead of flour, never for a second did I think to myself, this is going to be as good. But naively, I thought, hey, you know, the Kate waffle was like a 10. Even if this is a 6, but it, it hits the macros, that's pretty good. Um, so I, I poured the waffle batter into the waffle maker. Almost immediately, I was met with thick plumes of, of chocolate smoke. And I went, hmm, I guess that's normal. I don't think it was, in hindsight. Uh, and the smoke was just absolutely 
foul smelling. It was like sickly sweet, but also industrial or synthetic in a way. It was bad, but I was like, man, it doesn't smell as good as Kate's waffle, which is crazy because I know it taste wise it's going to be in the ballpark. Uh, when I opened up the waffle maker, first off, it had stuck a little bit to the waffle maker, the, the iron, I should say, which is a bad sign. But the worst sign was that, you know, because it stuck, it kind of pulled apart a bit when I opened it and the, the waffle was hollow. It had like, I don't know how to describe it, except to say that it had, it had like a top and a bottom. It had no middle. It, the, the waffle did not fluff in the least. It was, uh, hold on, we gotta be real cautious on this one. Those are not good enough to justify. This is really good. Especially if we end up spending time as the spirit. Um... It's I, I really don't know how to just how to describe it. Imagine if your bread only had crust. <laughs> so you're like you know like a cracker. Yeah, but then imagine that that cracker had no crisp associated with it at all. It was just mush and horrible and uh, it it created some strife too because Kate was like this smells horrible and I was like I know. But then, like, the smell lingered for so long. So I, I made enough waffle batter to theoretically make, like, six of these protein waffles. And I want to tell you, I am, have talked about it in these episodes over and over. I am not a picky eater, at the very least. I w as long as something is fit for human consumption, there are very, very few foods I will say no to. Like, th there's almost no, I mean, I, let's, obviously, if you're starving to death, you'll eat whatever. There's very few foods on Earth where I was, I'm like, I would rather be hungry than put this in my mouth, right? One of them is the konyaku jelly that we had in Japan, the so-called boiled triangles. Um, I, if I never ate that again, it would be too soon. It's not for me. Uh, you know how people are, they're always so, they justify their picky eating by saying it's a texture thing, not a taste thing, as if that makes it better somehow. They, this is the one time as an adult I've understood them. Because I'm like, it can't be a taste thing, because there is no taste. It's 100% a texture thing, and uh, the texture is bad. Anyway. I don't really like cucumbers. It's not like a taste thing, it's more like a texture thing. It's an enlightened pickiness. Sorry, I'm making enemies here. Um, this, this might be the second, you know? I ate literally an eighth of the protein waffle. And, uh, I said, no, I respect myself more than this. And then I, I threw the rest of the batter out. And it, it was with a heavy heart. I do not do it lightly. Because, honestly, there was like, you know, probably eight bucks worth of protein powder in the thing on top of the other ingredients. Thank God we weren't using real vanilla extract. Would have been like a $50 mistake. We don't need that. So yeah. Um, but I think it's a lesson that, that's valuable, right? Because now, like, I could go out and, you know, I'm pretty sure you could, like, at least buy the Kodiak cake, like, waffle, protein waffle mix online, and I hear it's pretty good. I believe it's pretty good, because everybody was like, you gotta try Kodiak cakes. It wasn't like, you know, there was any dissent at all. That was pretty lucky there, honestly, that we didn't get hit. Um, but, uh, you are still up, huh? Okay, we'll leave then. Um, really, like, I think it just is one of those things that it, it really cemented for me personally. Like, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Why are you trying to get so funky with it? Getting the protein waffles that taste worse than a protein shake and require like substantially more prep and cleanup time? Why not just keep drinking the shakes, dude? It's like I, I finally realized how good I had it in that moment. Because I, I want to be very clear. These protein waffles were um, worse than a regular waffle. Worse than a protein shake, and more work than both combined. Uh, and then on top of that, it wasn't like you were doing it for slightly 
inferior tasting food. You were doing it for... You basically laundered a bunch of ingredients into poison. That's the way I would describe it. It became inedible, like... Like the, like the food that you would expect a prisoner on like a spaceship to have to eat, you know? It's like, hey, we baked uh, a multivitamin and 25 grams of protein into a weird cake that you could eat in two seconds and get back to being waterboarded. It, it, I cannot stress enough that for me, I think it taught me a valuable lesson in, uh, in gratitude. I am now so much more grateful um, for the, the food that I've already been eating. <laughs> so that was my Saturday, and then we went to the Canucks game, and we actually won, which is uh, not the most unusual, but not a super usual situation. We gotta be real freaking cautious with this one. Use this right away, you might even get one more charge if you get lucky. Sorry, I, I will do it one more time. The invincibility gives us a good shot. I mean, the health up is, is well worth it. I don't think that's worth it, though. I think you want to suck that up. And I, I would do this again in a heartbeat. I think that room... We needed a room like that to feel good about our performance. After, okay, well, there goes our health up. But after our, our last episode where I really dropped the ball, honestly. It wasn't a, a an amazing run squandered. But it was like, you know... Could have been a lot easier. Even this one is like, it's not that good. But it was a good weekend. I can't complain, obviously. You know what I, I can complain about? I, I think that the era of, of my TLC obsession is almost over. 90 Day Fiance does still get aired on TLC all the time. Um, which is awesome. Saw a lot of great episodes last night. All who are against the queen shall die. If you ever find yourself saying that in your relationship, it might be time to re-examine the way that things are going. But um, they also have been starting to play these marathons of shows that, trust me, I get it. I understand the appeal, but it's not for me. So they've been really going deep on this show called uh, Dr. Pimple Popper, which is based on, well, it's not based on, it's the same person. It's a doctor who, um, their specialty was like, hey, I've got a weird bump or lump or, you know, cyst or blah, blah, blah. And they come in and Dr. Pimple Popper goes like, whoa, that's crazy. And then they pop it and a bunch of, like, goo comes out. And you go like, ooh, but also that's oddly satisfying. Um, so it got its own show on TV. Which is fine. Uh, I don't really like watching it. The reason here's it's not even that it's gross, because um, it is gross, but not in a judgy sort of way. Like I think is, I, I, if anything, like it's it's just interesting and a reminder that the human body is really just kind of like or, an organic uh, petri dish where you know all sorts of stuff can go wrong. You can get a blocked sebaceous gland all of a sudden. You know, ten years later, you got a, a, a zit the size of a basketball on your lower back. It's it's interesting on that level, but um, the reason I don't like it that much is is honestly because they only spend about like a third of the show actually doing the extractions, and the rest of it is like they try to turn it into this weird like you know how when you watch Cutthroat Kitchen or Chopped or whatever, it, it, all of the contestants have to play up a, a sad story. And I'm not saying that all of them are manufactured, but I'm like, man, every chef in the country is just, they have a, a terrible sob story. There's fires and illness and bankruptcies and yada, yada, yada. Just one day I want there to be a chef on one of those shows that's like, everything's going pretty good, but who would say no to another 10 grand? Anyway. Uh, it's like that. So they're always like, like, I saw one, and this guy, he hit, like, right on his hip, like, where your belt would kind of cinch up. 
he had a, a zit that I would describe as, well, let's just call it a bump, because I don't think it was a zit, but he had a, a bump the size of, a, like, a tennis ball. They went through, like, they humanized his story too much, and I understand how that sounds, but they, they showed him, like, playing basketball, and he's like, I can't exercise because of the bump, and they showed him buying pants, and he's like, I gotta buy bigger pants because of the bump. I don't want to see that, okay? I can infer that. I'm, you know, I'm an intelligent viewer. When I see a bump the size of a tennis ball on somebody's hip, in my head I go, geez, I wonder what it's like for that guy to buy pants. Probably not easy. Wonder what his jump shot looks like. Go ahead, you got me. I want more time spent viewing the medical procedure than uh, time spent... I don't want to say humanizing the people, because they are humans. I'm just saying, like, I, I'm not watching the story to be, like, the hardships of having a bump. I'm watching the story because I'm like, whoa, look at that huge bump. I wonder what color the goo is going to be. Oh, brown? But now they're going hard on this show that hasn't even premiered yet, but they play a commercial for it, like, every ten, ten seconds. <clears throat> I was going to say ten minutes, but then I had a little lump in my throat, and I thought, you know what? We could make that more ridiculous. It's called My Feet Are Killing Me, and the the trailer, I think it's basically where I tap out of the genre. Because it looks like exactly the same. People are like, you know... Because of my feet, I can't really buy shoes. And I'm like, I get it, but I don't really... That's not what I'm watching the television for. Um, yo, let's go suck this up. But then, when they take off their socks, it's so much more disgusting. Forgive the word, but people's feet are... Like, they've turned completely gray. Or they got, like, weird, like... I, by the way, I know you're listening to this. So you're like, I'm trying to fall asleep. I'll, I'll be merciful for once, okay? They're all messed up. Funguses, uh, decay. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I, that's a show where I'm like, I don't think that I... I don't think that one's for me. Give me more people that are naive about their relationships, and way, way less actual body horror. I don't want to see that body horror stuff. <clears throat> the pimple popper is a little different, because you're like, you know, if you got like, some of these people, they're like 80 years old, and they have a zit on their nose, and they're like, I had this since 1986. And then they pop it, and they, they feel good, right? They're like, thank God that got handled. I mean, they do bleed a lot sometimes. But then my feet are killing me. I feel like, you know... <laughs> if your feet look like that, it's less likely to be just like... My zit got a little bit out of control, and much more likely to be like, Oh my God, what are you doing on TV? Please go see, like, an actual private medical... Clinic, this is like a dystopia, where it's like you can only go get it handled. You know, you can only afford to get it done if the TV network also is, is paying for it. Like, it's just too real. And I want to be clear, I'm not making fun of their means. I'm more just like, how the heck did this system get constructed? That's like, yeah, we'll take care of your, you know, your, your foot has rotted off due to gout. Um... You can't, oh, that'll be $75,000 if you want to get that treated, you know, without the TV camera in your face. But we can let you get it for free if you just uh, sign this release to have your gross foot be all over internationally syndicated television. That's not fair for the patient, dude. Anyway, but I would still do it if I had to, I suppose. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I'll set a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya!